Welcome back to the Imaginary Gallery. It's TJ, your host. And we are delving further into the narcissist's bag of tricks. The topic for the evening is one of their favorite tricks, which is to override reality. I'm going to explain what exactly that looks like and explain what it actually means. So I'll begin with an illustration verbally involving two scenarios. Scenario A, there's a teenage girl who lives at home with her parents who have very strict rules. She's not permitted to go to parties. She's not permitted to be out late. News comes that there is a party this Friday and it's going to be down the street at one of the neighbors' house because the parents are going to be out of town. Well, in scenario A, this little teen girl knows her situation, has no interest in being a part of that party, knows that she'd never be allowed to even if she wanted to. So she simply says thank you for the invitation, but doesn't show up, stays in her bedroom listening to music. Scenario B. There's a teenager, just like the one in Scenario A, who's in the same circumstances, has the same type of parents, and hears about this party on Friday. Well, this person is creative and crafty. This teen girl in Scenario B tells the parents some kind of fabricated story, which would require her to be excused from the home on Friday. She makes up story, invents a false narrative and sneaks on over to that house down the street, goes to that party and lives it up. Well, this is the basis of the illustration of how these cluster B creatures love to override reality. To tie this in then to the cluster B creature, picture your situation with whatever cluster B creature you unfortunately came in contact with and think of what will typically happen with this type of creature. Somebody you're dating, one particular night you don't make any plans, you have something else going on, and then your cluster B creature is not heard from all evening, and you get a feeling something's going on, don't know what it is. But the next day, you talk to the creature and say, hey, last night I didn't hear from you, I thought I would. Did you do something? Did you go somewhere? And you're told, oh no, my phone was dead and I went to sleep. I slept the whole night through. Imagine that a few days later, you see some friends sharing some pictures of some party that happened that very night. And you happen to see your cluster bee creature smiling with its head buried in between two candy cantaloupes chicks. Well, naturally, you're going to be shocked because you were specifically told this creature stayed home, went to sleep, and the phone was dead. And plus, in the photograph, you see that very phone in the creature's hand as it's doing its thing. Well, typically, when you come across such a situation with such a person, it's natural to have a discussion. And I'm here to cover a few examples of the crap you'll be given in response. So for this particular example, let's say that next day, in addition to asking what the person did last night, you may say, are you sure you didn't do anything? I think you might have. I just get a feeling you have. And you'll be told you're wrong. Once you see the evidence that something else was going on, you may, you may confront this person and say, hey, I thought you were out somewhere on that night. I just saw pictures with a timestamp and date stamp with you there with your phone in your hand. Well, in this case, the cluster B creature typically doesn't have anything more they can lie about, so then the game switches. You may hear lines like, Well, you didn't want to see me that night, so I decided to go to this party. Or, I went to that party, yes, but I didn't do anything wrong. I just didn't tell you because I didn't want you to be upset. We're using this to refer back to scenario A and scenario B. I'm going to tell you what reality would be. Reality would be, and this creature says to you, Yes, I went to that party. I didn't really want to, but because you were busy, I went ahead and went. 
So, basically, it's your fault that I went to that party. We're going back to the scenario A and scenario B. This creature is basically trying to tell the target that he represents the girl in scenario A. She couldn't go to the party. She had no interest in going, and she didn't go. That's an example of someone who doesn't want to do something. They don't do it. Yet, this creature you've interacted with is actually playing out scenario B. Because the person told you it did nothing, the person told you that it went to sleep and its phone was dead, and so on. But the truth is, the person pretended to be in scenario A while being just like the kid in scenario B, where it snuck out, went to the party, and partied hard. And then later, after the fact, when you question, it's claiming it's a scenario A. This is all BS. Because the reality is, if the person didn't want to go to the party, reality would state that it would be like scenario A and would not go. Period. This creature is manipulating reality by behaving like the scenario B, which is equivalent to the sneaking and going through all the steps necessary to cover its tracks? Well, clearly, common sense would tell you, in reality, this person really wanted to go to that party. Scenario A didn't. She didn't want to go, and she didn't go. Scenario B wanted to go. So, when you attempt, of course, to sit this creature down and say, come on, you must have wanted to go to that party. Why did you lie about going? I've already told you I didn't want to upset you. You didn't want to see me, so I went there instead and all this BS nonsense. It is retarded for this creature to expect you to believe that it went to this party and it didn't even want to go, but it went anyway and it went through all the trouble of covering the track of lying about it and claiming it didn't go. That's a lot of effort. People don't typically put forth that much effort, in reality, to do something that they really don't want to do. Think about it. But if you're dealing with one of these creatures, they will attempt to push that override button on reality and try to convince you that somehow the reason it went to that party was your fault. Well, you didn't want to see me and I was lonely, so I went. But see, that's not how an adult would normally behave. That would normally be, hey, honey, does it bother you if I go to this party because I think I want to go? Okay, I'm going to go, and I went. No, nope, that doesn't exist with these people because <laughs> they don't live in reality. They want to present a fake image to you that if you're not with them, they're sitting at home alone, twiddling their thumbs, waiting for you to call again. This brings us to the next part of this process of overriding of reality, which is the tendency of these cluster B creatures to blame you or others for their actions. Like in this example, I didn't want to go to the party, but because you had done whatever you'd done, I went. The important thing to remember is adults are responsible for their own behavior. No one else is. Now sure, an adult can witness someone do a certain behavior and because of that, decide to do a similar behavior, but under no circumstances did the other person make or force this other one to do what it did, because ultimately there's a point where every adult reaches that they have to decide, hmm, when they think, I want to do this, I think I'll do that, but they have to actually give themselves the permission to step forward and actually do it. Example would be, woman found out her husband was kissing some other chick, so she thinks, well, I'll show him. I'm going to go find a man and go out with him. And then she might consider this, but then when it comes down to it, she may think, you know what, forget it. I'm not doing that. And she doesn't do it. Why? Well, because she decided to not do it. Imagine if she did do it. If she were to say to the husband, well, it's your fault. I did it. I didn't want to, but because you were with that other lady, I went off with this one. No. Think back to scenario A and B. That is excuses fools use to cover up their behaviors, yet the behaviors tell you that they did what they chose to do when they reached that point of deciding, do I want to do this? Because they could have done two things. They could have said, I really want to do this to get that person back, but 
I'm better than that, so I won't. Or, oh, he did that to me. I'm doing this, and I, oh, I'm not going to tell him about it. And they do it. This is illustrating how these creatures try to warp reality and make others in this fantasy world responsible for their behavior. Like they are an empty zombie walking through the earth, and they wait till someone else says something or does something, and then they react accordingly against their will. Wrong. I can think of a particular example where I was involved with a particular creature who I could see what it was. It was a loose creature. And I knew it was active, doing all kinds of things. But for some reason it had an agenda in store for me. All that stuff was played down and denied because this person got around, basically. Well, at one point, a certain scenario occurred. The scenario was I was talking to a particular person in public and afterwards, the creature I was with said something like, I don't know that person, but I know who it is. And if you did this and you were with that person, oh, it's ter basically trying to pry, trying to warn, trying to say, stay away from that person. But at the same time, oh, but I don't know the person. Fake. Because it turns out the person's phone number was in this person's phone. Oh, I don't know that person, but their phone number's in my phone. Oh, I don't know how that could be. Fake override of reality story eventually came out that during the time this person was claiming and swearing every day I'm devoted to you and to you only and when questioned you're sure you didn't interact with anybody else this whole time and you're told that's correct I didn't and the truth is you suspect it did do something with this particular person and the story is of course like the multi layers of abuse the first answer is no I didn't do it period of course, eventually, facts surface, and that story from, it's a stranger, I don't know the person, changes to, fine, yes, I did do this thing with that person. Well, here we go with the scenario A and B. Their fake agenda for me is, oh, you're the only one I want. I'm not interested in others. I'm not like the others. Yet, this happened, happens to have happened during this period that you're seeing this person who's making these false claims. That's an override of reality. And it causes cognitive dissonance, which means you're going to say, but wait a second, you swore that you hadn't done this thing, and now you have? And not only that, you said you hadn't had any guests over since you moved here, and the person came to your home? That's two lies, and one, oh my, you'll get one of those retarded answers, such as, well, it's, it's your fault, I didn't want to do it, but because you had said this, or you had done that, I went ahead. Again, we're back to the original scenario, A and B. Well, I had a difficult conversation with this person because I could see that what I suspected was true, but yet its narrative was denying the fact, saying it didn't do this, it never did this, it didn't want to do this, but now we found out it did, and it was what well, sat down to say, look, let's get this person into reality. Because I didn't realize I was dealing with the kind of creature who wants to remain in the fictitious reality. But I was trying to drag it into the real reality. Looked it right in the face and said, look, why did you do that with so-and-so? Which involved illicit behaviors. And guess what the answer was? Well, because you had said blah, 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 blah. And I had to say, whoa, no, let's try this again. Why did you do what you did with whomever? Because you had said, uh, wrong, and I had to actually answer it for the person. I said, look, you did that with that person because you wanted to. And that got it to actually break character for a second and say, well, of course. It's like, well, then why didn't you just say that? Well, we know why, because to admit that contradicts the I don't think of anyone else but you. I'm not like others who lie and cheat. I want you and you... Uh, Fake. I am the narcopath. Another secret. I know the power of sex. Because Lord knows nobody has had as much sex as I have. Please. I used to have sex with six or seven people a day. Try to do the math for that one. But I know that the way to a man's heart is also in his bedroom. Not serviced enough of your parts to know exactly what to do with them. Now, I know there are many different classes of people who like different things. I can usually pinpoint what type you are and end up doing the right thing. Now, another trick I use is face it. 
when two people get together to get it on, everybody has their own style. Like right now, if I seduced you, I might put my fingernail under your collar and pull you over to the bed and rip your t-shirt off. Start to lick your chest, because some guys like that. I would do trial and error at first, but I'd initiate some kind of contact, and then my mind would be on record. I would note internally every single move you made. If in the bedroom, the first thing you did once I took my panties off, my bra, if the first thing you did was come up to my face and say, you look beautiful, and then nuzzle my ear, I'm gonna record that. And then, if you do something else, which again, remember, I let you do the work, at least at the beginning stages. I was busy recording stuff. If you then stroked my beautiful hair gently, I'd take note of that. We could go down the whole list, which I won't bore you with now, because you know. After I memorized all the little moves you made, the next time we got together, I took control. And I copied every single one of your moves directly back to you. Because I've learned with my experience, people typically do to their partner what they like done to them in certain ways. Bingo! It worked. It made you think that you found the perfect bedmate, plus all that love bombing I did to you. You had it made. You had the best chick in the world. That's why it was so hard to get over me, plus you couldn't believe. After all my worshipping of you in the beginning, it switched to hatred of you and fucking you for my life. That really leaves a deep impression on those that I work my magic on. It works every time. Don't feel bad about it. I'm just smarter than you, Goyam. Huh. <laughs>